And now this one is actually very different than the previous two because this is not separable. Have a look. We have dy dx minus tangent x and then multiply by y. So the y is not itself the tangent. And then this is equal to 1 minus tangent x. This is called the first order because we have the first derivative. Linear because all the derivatives and also the y's are of the first power. First order linear differential equation. And the way that we're going to handle this is that we'll use the so-called integrating factor. I have a video on that already. You guys can go ahead and check that out. So I will write that down for you guys though, so what it is. We must have the equation in the standard form, namely dy dx plus some function in terms of x, so let's call that p of x, and then multiply by y, and anything else in terms of just x, it will be on the right-hand side. So notice that this right here does not have the y, so it fits this category. Now, the integrating factor, abbreviated as if, if this is this easy, no, 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 no. integrating factor. Usually, we use this mu as a notation, all right, so mu of x. Ready? Mu of x is equal to e for the base, yeah, like most of the time. And then the power here, it's actually the integral. Integral what? P of x. Yes. So let's go ahead and figure out what mu of x is in our situation. Of course, you have to be careful though. This is our P of x. It is negative tangent x. So when we have mu of x, we will have to do the integral here, and that's negative tangent x dx. Well, this is just e, and the negative is still negative, and the integral of tangent x is ln absolute value of secant x, and you don't need a plus c here, because if you do put plus c, that becomes a coefficient here, and later on we'll multiply this integrating factor throughout this differential equation, so if you have like a C or whatever here, they tell you can divide everybody by that special constant, so it doesn't matter. We can almost cancel out the E and Ln, but we have a negative here, spotting us. Let's put a negative to here. Becomes the negative one power. So this is E to the Ln absolute value of one over secant x, like this, right, one over this is not going to be the negative one here as the inverse, all right? Now we can cancel out e and ln, and we have this absolute value spotting us. We are to take out the absolute value. Of course, we consider the plus or minus. And of course, 1 over secant x is the same as cosine x. What do we do? The positive version or the negative version doesn't matter. Imagine if you choose a negative cosine, you multiply everybody by negative cosine. Guess what? We can then divide everybody by negative. So let's not do that. So let's just use, let's just use mu of x for cosine x, just a positive version. So how it works is that, if we look at this original differential equation again, dy dx minus for tangent, because we have to multiply by cosine, let's go ahead and just write yes sine x over cosine x and then multiply by y that's equal to 1 minus again tangent is sine x over cosine x now we look at this then multiply everybody by the integrating factor which is cosine x so the left hand side will give us cosine x times dy dx and this and that is just cancel out. So we have minus sine x times y. And let me put parentheses because y is not itself the sine. And then cosine x here. And lastly, we have the minus sine x. Cool. And now what though? You know, this is so cool about the integrating factor. Because the left hand side, it's actually a derivative. Derivative of what? Check this out. It's the derivative of cosine x times y. You don't trust me? Have a look. How do you differentiate cosine x times y with respect to x? Y is a function of x. We will have to use the product rule. Check this out. First one times the derivative second, namely dy dx. 
and then we add don't worry we add the second function times the derivative of the first the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x see so the left hand side is actually just the derivative of cosine x times y and then the right hand side we have cosine x minus sine x what do we do next though well when we solve differential equation yeah even though we integrate it already but let's integrate it again because if we integrate this integral and derivative will cancel right and we'll be in the x world so integrate both sides on the left hand side there's nothing to do just write down cosine x times y and this is equal to the derivative the integral of cosine x is positive sine x and the integral of negative sine x is positive cosine x yeah and then plus c yeah all right now i will divide everybody by cosine x so we can get the y by itself and ladies and gentlemen we get a general solution y is equal to okay this is tangent x plus 1 and this right here is plus c times 1 over cosine x of course it is cosecant x so notice that this is very interesting because when we have this differential equation this right here is the general solution we do have this extra huh well, the reason I say it is because, yes, I'm going to show you with this right here. I made it in the way that <laughs> everything in this video is just 1 plus tangent x. You guys should know that already. So y is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative power over 4. So I will just put it right here. We have tangent of negative pi over 4 and then plus 1 plus c times sin, I mean secant of negative pi over 4. All right, this right here is negative 1 plus 1. They will be 0. So you see we have 0 is equal to c times secant of negative pi over 4. c has to be equal to 0. Of course, you know it. So ladies and gentlemen, wow, I'm so excited for this right here because I didn't expect that I was able to come up with six differential equations that you have the same answer. y equals 1 plus tangent x. Thank you.